bitch is shaking the table. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Shaking the Table podcast. Today is very, very special because I got my girl Shannon here, aka Nick Swag and fucking these uh, <laughs> dummy. What's happening? I had to do the Baltimore fuck it is dummy. So basically, y'all, today you're finally getting what you asked for because y'all ask me all the time in my DMs. Um, to talk to y'all about travel tips and find a real person, not no micro influencer, not no Instagram baddie, a real person who takes trips and budgets for them, plans for them, and actually has a good time doing it. It's not like she's doing a shipper show, like she's actually going to talk to y'all about um, what, I guess, where her desire to comes, uh, comes from to travel and what she does for a living and how she actually makes all this shit happen because Shannon just got back from Jamaica. I'm hoping she adopts me by the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shannon, let's start off um, so the audience can kind of get to know you. Who are you? My name is Shannon. Um, born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, what do you yeah. do? IT support. Okay, um, okay, so that's why she's taking yeah. trips. Like, I'm hired, yes or no? And I just moved to New York like seven months ago. So, yeah, New York by way of Baltimore. You know the vibes. Okay. So what drives you to want to travel so much? Like, what is it that gives you, I guess, the travel bug, as a lot of people say? I would say like it's it's something I'm used to doing. My parents took me on a summer vacation, like, every year as a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, as I've gotten older and started making my own money, I was like, okay. I don't want to hang out with my parents anymore, so I should probably, like, start doing things on my own. So, um, with my ex that I was dating at the time, we would go places, and then I took a couple girls trips, and now it's just something I do throughout the year. Every year, I take a trip somewhere, at least one. Okay, so let's go back to 2019. What are some of the trips that you've taken, and which one was your favorite? 2019? (laughs) That was last year. Okay. Um, 2019, let's see, I went to Oakland, Columbia, yeah, I think that was, oh, Atlanta. Atlanta, there nice. Okay, so you, you got some international, but some domestic. Um, so a lot of people want to know, um, how do you decide where you want to go? So is it one of those things where you go to Google Flights and whatever's cheapest, boom, you book it? Or is it like based on where your friends want to go or a little bit of both? It's, it's both. Um, my friends, if we, if there's an event, like a festival or something, mm-hmm. We'll send each other the, the information, be like, they're trying to go. If it's somewhere, like, random that I've picked, then I'll just start planning it. So it's both. Okay, so talk to me about that planning thing. Because for me, it's like, I want to go on trips, but I don't like relying on other people. So for you, do you think it, group travel is better, or do you recommend, like, people traveling solo? Honestly. Honestly. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Getting any group of people together is stressful. That's why wedding planners and um, event planners cost so much. Mm -hmm. Just getting everybody on the same page is stressful, and that's any situation. So traveling is no different, and I'm going to be honest, I've been irritated as well. It's just natural. (laughs) But it, it really depends on the occasion. Like, if we're traveling for New Year's or something or celebrating somebody's birthday, it's not necessarily something you want to do by yourself. Um, I did when I went to Cuba. I did go for my birthday by myself, but it was Ooh. literally like I planned that two weeks before I went because people were like it fell through on me, and I was just like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna just go by myself." Um, but it's not like I purposely look to go solo all the time. It's usually my last resort, where it's something I really, really want to do, so I just go. But Mm -hmm. I do reach out to my friends first to go. Mm, Okay, so let's get into solo trips, because I I don't know why. Maybe it's my anxiety, or maybe I'm just overthinking it. I'm scared to go on a solo trip, and a lot of people have been telling me, like, for 25, if you don't want to do a group trip, like, you need to go on a solo trip, because it's a different experience. So talk to me about, you know, going to Cuba by yourself, and that whole experience, like, how was that? Cuba was great. I would definitely go back or retire there, one of the two. Mm-hmm. But Cuba, Cuba specifically, so with them just reopening, like, being able to travel there, they're not, it's not um, over touristy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not a lot of people trying to, like, sell you things all the time. You might want it to, especially if you're in a group of people. Um, and it's, like, 
it, it's kind of like it's, it's still in its natural state because it hasn't been over touristed yet. It, I don't even know if that's a word, but y'all know what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, like you, you sometimes you go places <laughs> and it's just like it's a bit much, like Times yeah, Square, yeah, Times Square yeah, type thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so the other place, in contrast, um, I went to Oakland for a weekend by myself. Um, and it was like, I was there for a festival and it was like very relaxing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, um, I would say like start small. Like I started small (laughs) by kind of dating myself. I would go to the movies by myself. I've been out to eat by myself and I was just doing a whole bunch of things by myself. I would meet people. I I went to concerts by myself. And I was like, the one thing I had (laughs) done by myself was go to a festival but strangely enough, I went out of the country first by myself before I went to a festival by myself because I felt like a festival was like a lot more people. It's a lot more stimulation. Mm-hmm. And for me, like I'm introverted. It's like I kind of blend in, but it's still like so much happening. But being out of the country, I could go at my own pace and I could just it's like open space. But you still don't. It's not, like, too much going on unless you're purposely somewhere like that. So, I guess that's why it was easy for me to do one before the other. But um, I would definitely suggest, like, starting small if you if you find it uncomfortable. But you really have to be comfortable with yourself. Especially, like, if you get lost, you can't panic. <laughs> if you're somewhere that doesn't, their main language is not English, you, of course, you can't go ask people for directions all the time. So, I would definitely say, like, start small, like yourself even if you're with somebody just take yourself out and ju- get to know your own company how you react to situations what you like to do what you don't like and that'll like lead you to traveling by yourself mm, good answer okay so I know a lot of people like myself who are hesitant to travel alone um, being a black woman especially uh, what are some tips that you have for just staying safe if you do decide to go on a solo trip? Like, what's some things that you were like, okay, I have to have this with me or I have to do this to make sure that I'm safe? So, traveling stateside, um, definitely, like, having emergency contact on hand. That's, I mean, that's just basic common sense for, like, everyday <laughs> life anyway. Yeah. Um, but abroad, Google Maps is your friend. Google Translate is your best friend. Um, and, and the same thing goes for emergency contacts there, but also the government, (laughs) those people, there's a, um, I think it's called, I, I, the name escapes me, but you can enter your information in, I think it's called STEM, I didn't read down. But you enter your information about, like, your travel dates and where you're going. And should something happen while you're abroad, they know where you are, the embassy. Really? I wish I knew the name of it. Step. Yeah, it was a letter off. The step travel. So, yeah, you go to the step travel. You can Google step travel government, some kind of query. It'll take you there. You can enter your travel dates and information like that. If an emergency happens abroad, like, I don't know, a, a war breaks out. They'll know that you're there and try to get in contact with your family and stuff like that. Um, other ones, and I mean, just in general, it's 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 no different set of rules when you're traveling alone. Just kind of common sense, like don't look like a tourist, and don't <laughs> look like you don't know what you're doing. Just kind of blend in. If you are unsure, try to pull off to the side somewhere. Um, don't tell people you're alone, of course. Don't be a walking lick. Um, <laughs> don't be a walking lick. Oh my god. Um, it's okay to talk to strangers, but you know, try to feel them out first. Um, I can say that I've like fallen to like good opportunities, and just it eases me weirdly enough talking to people that I can seem to trust mm-hmm. when I'm traveling there. Um, that's pretty much it. Like one of the first girl trips I planned to put together was two totally separate friend groups. Mm-hmm. Um, it was my line sister, her best friend, and then three of my other longtime friends. And I was like, hey, who wants to go to Miami? Everybody had money. So we all went. It was about six of us to this, like, two-bedroom suite. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a great time. I know people say, like, people go to Miami and don't come back friends, but we're all still friends. Right. <laughs> like, no, I think for me, too, it's like, whenever people ask who I'm going to be there, I'm like, why? Unless you're the type of person that has a problem with every... First of all, I probably wouldn't even invite you in the first mm-hmm. place if I know that you're going to have a problem with every single person on the trip. You're not going to get an invite 
in general. Mm -hmm. So I just find that question so interesting, and I wonder how other people like navigate that and go about that. Like, you know, it don't matter. Just pull up. Mm -hmm. You gonna pull up or not? Basically. Um. So that kind of ties into how do you decide who goes on trips with you? Do you pick people that? You know, gonna have because sometimes if the friends that turn up with you, they ain't got the fun. So how do you like go about that? Do you invite everybody, and then from there you just free so, for all? Or? <laughs> I'll so usually I ask my closest friends first, like what their budget is looking like for the dates I want to go, mm-hmm. um, and then I'll go from there and like expand it to be like, okay, do you think such and such would want to go? Because we kind of all had the same circle of friends. Um, I traveled with my cousin for like the first time last year. We went to Cancun. That was her birthday trip she put together. Um, so like we were looking at going somewhere this year. It was just us two. It, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the only method I had to it. I asked my closest friends first. If they can't go, I'll, you know, ask my last sister. And now that my cousin's a part of that pool, I can ask her. Um, I guess that's just a benefit of kind of like being a floater. I have different friend groups and I do try to make sure like I keep our budgets reasonable so that the pool of people that can go is, you know, can go. Um, but I don't really have like a specific set of people for like certain types of trips, but I would recommend if you're somebody else with like a larger group of friends, if you know that... Susan likes to sleep in, then don't take <laughs> Susan on a turn up trip and vice versa. Mm. So then from there, it's like, how do you navigate that? Because I, I know like having different groups of friends, it can be tricky. So like, say you're planning your birthday trip. Um, what are some of the steps you would take to make sure that this is like the best trip you've ever, I know that there's like no such thing, the best trip you've ever been in, because something's always going to happen, right? But like, h- how would you go about, like walk us through that? Because some people have questions. They don't know where to start. They don't know where to look. They don't know where to stay. Sometimes they just need inspiration. I usually pick, like, a time frame when I want to go. So, like, I love the beach. Like, my, my summer's not complete without the beach. So, if I'm going somewhere in the summer, I try to pick somewhere, of course, with the beach. Um, and I look at, like, dates that work for me work-wise um, when I feel comfortable taking that time from work. Uh, then flights are the absolute last thing I look at. Really? We, can talk, we can get into that later because <laughs> people that's if anything like I'm no travel expert but I'm probably the most traveled out of my friends and that's the first thing people always ask me and I'm like don't ask me that really? <laughs> we'll get to that later the so <laughs> flat, flights are the last thing I look at but I definitely like pick out dates and like a time frame first and see what places are best for those dates because some some places especially international have like high travel seasons yeah yeah and they can be more rainy expensive. season yeah mm-hmm. things like that so uh dates are first then a destination um i don't really have like a specific budget budget and that's probably a privilege to me i would definitely suggest doing the budget don't be me in that regard <laughs> but i do look for every way that I can save money. So if it's cheaper to travel on this set of dates, then I'll pick that over mm-hmm. another set of dates. If um, if I find that Airbnbs are cheaper than hotels, I'll pick an Airbnb. I'm a strong Airbnb advocate. I know that they've had some controversy over time, but it's convenient for me, like mm-hmm. the experiences that I want to have over hotels. Then um, you get the whole place. Yeah. I, I usually get, like, whole places. Um, a couple times I have stayed in, like, shared spaces. Mm. But I always read reviews there. Uh, when we went to Columbia last year, it was, like, an apartment-style Airbnb. It was, like, a, it was a duplex. And it was so nice. Like, it was, it was like, my best friend and I had our own bathroom on two different floors. And it was, like, um, my, my bed was on a loft. Um... I had a little kitchenette and a, a sofa. Um, check-in was late because clean lady was late. But um, with its accessibility to like different parts of Cartagena, like that made up for it. I wasn't even mad. Like that was, I can say that was like my best birthday. Oh, so I, I like, really want to go there because I heard like um, 
I guess I should say black, right? I don't know if like if there's a specific term for like black people over there, but um, I just heard it's so like rich in culture. Yes. So talk about that experience, like just going out and venturing out. Um, what did you guys even do? Like, just give me the tea. We did so much. We did so Carson. So when I first like figured out Carson Hennig, because I think that was that was another trip like decided off the fly. I was like, where am I gonna go for my birthday this year? And one of my good friends. She had just went to Columbia, and I think I saw one other person in Columbia, and I was like, I'm just going to Columbia. <laughs> so, my dad actually helped me with the Airbnb as a gift, and not thinking, we spent all seven days in Cartagena, and I was like, dang, we should split it up. But, by the end of the trip, I was glad that we just did the whole seven days there, because it was so, can I cuss? I it, was so hot. it was so fucking hot. It was so fucking hot. It was it was so motherfucking hot. Like mm. as soon as I got off the plane, my gloss, my glasses. What time did you go? What time of year? It was during their whatever lunar shit be happening. Um, <laughs> like like they like famous time. That was it. Their summertime is all winter. The Ooh. summer solstice. I don't know. With, Good with to it, know. With astrology girls at one of them things. <laughs> but it was I, I stepped off the plane. My glasses just fogged up. It was so fucking hot. So. There were days that we just slept all day and left out for dinner, mm-hmm. but it was relaxing. Like, if you if you visit my Instagram and see the highlights, like, it looks like party, party, party all the time. And it was a lot of partying, but there was also a lot of fucking sleep. So, <laughs> it was it was a really good time. And Cartagena specifically is, like, the party city. Really? Okay. Um, over there, it's, it's, like, it's very much... Um, it reminded me a lot of New Orleans, like mm-hmm. the streets, because some of them were like cobblestone and like just kind of raggedy, but drivable. Um, oh, driving is terrible over there, too. I, I meant to it. ask you that about like, <laughs> um, getting around when you're overseas. What's that experience been like for you? So, um, so overseas. So, like, my first international trip was in Antigua. There's taxis there and they're fixed, they're fixed rates. There's literally like a readout of how much they're supposed to charge you. Uh, let's see. Cuba. Cuba, they can charge you what they want, but if you are a little brown and can speak some Spanish, you can negotiate it. If you're white, I'm sorry. They probably won't try sorry to Sorry to you. this man. <laughs> um, Cartagena is fixed, but they will also try to get you. But my Spanish is, like, very intermediate. So, um... By, like, the second day, we got it down. It was whatever. They do have Uber there, but it's not reliable because it's not legal. Uh-uh. We took Uber once, <laughs> and it was, like, a 10-minute wait. There's, there's a couple places where I wouldn't do Airbnb, so Cancun, we stayed on a resort in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. We literally figured, found where we were going to stay at two nights before because the original place we were going to stay was an hour away from where we were, or a couple hours rather, from where we were flying into. We flew into Montego Bay. We were going to stay somewhere in Clarendon with my friend's friend that lives there, but it wasn't safe over there. She was like, her mom doesn't let her go out at night and wow. we're like, oh, that's not the vibe of this trip, so we got to figure out where we're going to stay before we leave for this flight in 48 hours. Oh so... <laughs> So we found a, a, a really nice bed and breakfast. We actually made out really nice. It was on a hill. It had really nice views. It was like 10 minutes from the airport. Um, smoke friendly. Had a smoke shop next door. Um, the owner had this cutest, ugliest dog. It was like, had like, a, it had one of those underbites, but it was so friendly. It was in fluffy and cute. And I mean, we made out really good. So there's some places, like, I wouldn't do an Airbnb at all. That's one of them. But it was a bed and breakfast, so it still gave me the Airbnb feel. Mm, okay. So, I remember, this is me, like, it's the stalking you, of course. <laughs> so, I remember on your story one day, you had these envelopes against your wall, and they, like, they had uh, places, like, destinations. Tell the listeners, like, what what do you do? Is that how you budget? Like, what are those envelopes, and are they working for you in terms of, like, budgeting and saving for these trips? So they were actually sticky notes, <laughs> girl. <laughs> and I had like the destination. So last year, I kind of had in mind where I wanted to go for the year, or just a mental reminder because I would like the festivals. I would buy tickets to them and be like, "Oh shit, I didn't buy my flight." Because again, flights are the last thing I get. Mm-hmm. So I was just writing down the destination, the flight in, flight out, because 
um, who want to give you early flight tips. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy them separately than it's round trip. So I would have it listed out and then the place to stay. And I would check off each one as I had purchased it because I try to plan early and I also like split between two different cards, two different payment methods. Mm -hmm. So it was more like a mental reminder for me, like what's coming up, what I need to like, when I need to pull back my expenses and just checking off what I had left to buy for each trip. Um, right now, my sticky wall has Jamaica, uh, Houston, Thailand, Thailand like a chop. Oh, um, why? My Corona girl. Oh, corona. I'm dead. <laughs> um, I'm weak, but that's so true. Yeah. It, 2021, it, might have to catch me. It, I'm sad about it because I really, like, I was ready to take my talents overseas. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done with the Caribbean and speaking Spanish. Like, I'm ready to, like, go over the ocean, but I'll figure it out. Um, let's see, Houston, Thailand, Jamaica, Toronto, and I think I had, like, one more international in mind. I'm really, 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 like, leaning towards Iceland. Ooh, Maybe I had a friend that just went there. Yeah, I've, I've been looking at Iceland for like three, four years now, but it's cold. I don't, I don't do the go cold. to cold. The Lord. one cold place we went to was Toronto, but that trip got cut short, and we were supposed to go back th this past year, but it wasn't in the budget. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to flame y'all up because I did drag y'all on like two trips this year. It's cool. Mm -hmm. We can skip Toronto for now. So we're looking at going to Toronto this summer, but I don't know. But if Toronto doesn't happen, definitely Iceland. I've been, I've had my eyes on Iceland, honestly, for like three, four years. And I've just been like, it's cold, but I really want to go and get in the lagoons. And like, mm -hmm. something That's cool. the only reason why I want to go. Yeah, yeah. It's something <laughs> different. So I'm just like, you know, that, that might happen this year. So um, how far in advance do you start saving the money because i think that that's something that's hard for me because me it's like if i'm looking at shit right now girl so i kind of do it backwards <laughs> my finances are backwards don't be me once again don't be <laughs> me. i don't like set a budget and put away money for it like i know some people have like a travel fund or they use apps or they have a jar I'm the complete opposite. I'll decide I want to go somewhere and just start cutting back on my expenses. Yeah, and then same. when I'm ready to buy the, the, the flight or buy Airbnb, I just do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I went a couple months without getting my lashes done. Um, I would stretch my nails out a little longer. Okay. <laughs> I sell <laughs> things on Poshmark. Um, I take less lifts and I walk a lot more. It's, I mean, especially in New York, it's hard to, to like, budget sometimes. Everything is, is is expensive and like things be happening, but yeah, I would I would definitely suggest, especially if you're just starting out traveling, to budget. Don't be me, but if you can afford it, go for it. Just cut back. I, there was it was I think I went without buying groceries for like two months. But again, like I'm in a very privileged position. My job provides lunch every day, Ooh, so okay. I could take Tupperware of food home. And it would last me weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks. I also had a lot of help from my dad because he's just dad's dad. He's, he's so cute. Dad. <laughs> he's so cute. So the, some weekends that I was coming home, if he was driving me back that weekend, he would help me with groceries. I would have a bunch of meat and stuff in the freezer. I didn't have to buy groceries. So it, it definitely depends on your situation. And I'm in a unique position where I can just get up and go. I don't have kids and my rent's affordable. And so I can do trips the way I do them. I would not recommend it though. But if you can do it, go for it. And that's a real answer. <laughs> and that's what I was looking for, y'all. With this episode, I wanted a, to get a real person because sometimes people come on these types of shows or go on YouTube and they, you know, give you this holier than thou ass answer like, you need to be, your expenses need to be 20% of 30% of, listen, we're human. We're in New York City where everything costs fucking $3,000 off rip. So, like, to hear that there's some trips that you're just like, I didn't budget, I just booked my flight, or I just booked my Airbnb, I just went for it. That's good because you're, like, taking that risk. And like you said, there are times where you aren't going without because you have your dad, you have your job, and I'm the same way. Like, if there's a trip that I'm planning for and I know, like, all right, we're not going to be able to get 
our braids redone this month, but that's okay because sis, you're gonna get on YouTube and you're gonna figure out how to retwist them shit tonight. Yeah, yeah. You can't get your nails and toes done at the same time. That's fine. You have to find ways that work for you instead of trying to, I guess, this all in one approach. A lot of people do that. They're like, okay, so I'm gonna only take out cash. If that doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. Like, at the end of the day, you have to do what is manageable for you. Yeah, I, I would definitely, especially if it's somewhere you really want to go. And a lot of people get hung up on, like, trying to go on international trips first, so, like, as soon as possible. There are some very beautiful stateside places, that places I haven't been that I would like to go to. Like, we have a lot of nice geography here, so you don't have to pay thousands of dollars for the international flight to see a beach or, like, Mm-hmm. You know, do unique things. There's ATV riding in Vegas. Go to Vegas. <laughs> um, exactly. But Phoenix and Arizona and Colorado and them got nice rock formations. You can see um, the the white presidents over there somewhere. I mean, <laughs> if you want snow, we, we got, you know, the further up north you go. It, I mean, it, it's stuff here, so don't get hung up on, like, going somewhere internationally. And at the end of the day, like, if it's something you really want to do, and you're not sure how you're going to do it, just buy the ticket and figure everything else later. Like, Honestly. Because <laughs> you, you, you spend the money on the ticket, you're not going to waste it, especially if it's a non-refundable one, which are the cheapest. Mm-hmm. So, you know, give yourself enough time to figure it out and just figure it out later. Um, but, yeah, that, that is it, my way is definitely, like, unorthodox. And I'm in, in a very special position to do that. I'm going to get better. <laughs> But, but if it's working for you, yeah. I mean, you're out here, you're living your life, you're going to places that you've always wanted to go. I feel like to some people, like, that's part of the dream, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if it works for you, it works for you. And I think that sometimes, like, especially on the internet, like, today in so, today's social media age, we get so caught up in the destination versus the journey. Like, mm-hmm. think about how cool it is to say, like, oh, I planned a solo trip to go to Thailand, and this is how I saved up for it, by eating cereal, Frosted Flakes every single night. Hey, that eating Cheerios was good, let me tell you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so instead of, I would rather do that and then get to go to my dream location than to be like, oh, I'm only going to save $20 a week and I'm going to put it in this container. Like, that's just so, like, it's unorganic. To me. There's not enough yeah. risk in yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> it's not enough risk in that. It's so unor- inorganic. And then also, like, think about how, like, out of your way that is. Like, for me, budgeting and saving shouldn't be something that, like, takes so much out of you. Like it should you if you're gonna find something that works for you, find something that you could easily do. Like, okay, you get the the mint app that shows you how much you're spending on unnecessary shit. If that notification helps you out, save you from spending fourteen dollars a week at Starbucks, do that. Absolutely. If the digital app helps you, which I don't really make, recommend by the way, I had the digit app. That shit was taking money out, and I didn't know it was there, and that was some of my rent money. So I was fight, <laughs> and then they was trying to tell me that they couldn't put it back, and the landlord was going to whoop my ass, girl, the oh, gal. No. And then this was when I was living in Bethesda at the time. You know, the white people was coming for their money. Oh, no. So did you that? I don't know, sis. <laughs> you might have to open up another savings account or something, get you get you something different. I, I don't know. Um, but I wanted to ask you, too, are there any special... Um, credit cards or anything like that that you use that gives you like travel rewards i know sometimes people have like the discover card or like chase rewards or anything that you have i use capital one Ooh, so okay i was actually late on the credit card thing i only got a credit card when i realized like okay i'm going to keep traveling on these big trips and i might as well like invest in something that's going to help me uh, build my credit but also like help me like divide my expenses because i was paying for everything i bought my debit card so I got the Capital One. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but it's the one that gives you travel rewards because they offer. Is it Venture? Yes, Venture. Venture one. Oh, okay. Because um, they offer a few options. Um, the interest is higher on the other ones. I have the standard Venture one. I get tra- uh, uh, flight points, flight miles with all my purchases, but I can also erase travel purchases. So if I spend, if I use that on a lift. I use it for flights. Um, I think gas stations are included. I think. Don't quote me. Mm-hmm. But um, most most travel expenses I can erase, and that's less money I have to pay. Um, and you can use your miles and book flights directly through their flight um, rewards section. Um, also, Ooh. I recently found out, I don't think they advertise it, but uh, Lyft is partnered with Delta. You can earn Delta miles for your airport transfers. 
What? Yes. So if you're taking the airport to, I'm not taking the airport, taking Lyft to and from the airport, wherever you're going, you get miles for that. You just have to connect your account. Mm. So I just finesse. I think I have an account with most major airlines. Um, I'm not loyal at all. <laughs> whoever has the best price, whoever has like the best layover situation, I just book with them. But I'm always getting something back because I have an account with them. And I try to use my credit card when I pay it down so that I can get miles on my credit card as well. Like, I just make sure I get something out of all my purchases pretty much. Mm-hmm. But Very smart. Very those, smart. Are, those are two tidbits. But I definitely recommend a um, some kind of, like, travel credit card. I've heard great things about Southwest, but I'm not ready to open up. Girl, <laughs> shit, I can barely manage the ones we got. Um, I also want to ask you because I know sometimes there are um, different like newsletters and stuff you can sign up for. Like I'm not sure if you've heard of like Scott's cheap flights and all that. So, are there any um, uh, Twitter pages or newsletters or whatever that you subscribe to to get these flight deals? Yes, I love Scott's flights. Even though I don't really book when they say something, um, I'm gonna just go ahead and drop the flight tips now. <laughs> so, don't buy your flight. Um, out further than 30 days because shit be happening, life happens, um, and you can, prices change. So the reason I get kind of agitated when people ask me about flights is because if you're not ready to buy when you ask me, don't ask me. Because Mm -hmm. whatever I find is what the price is. Depending on how close to the date you're trying to leave, it's probably not going to change. It's probably going to go up. But if you find a good price on a flight, buy it. Um, I use the Hopper app that will alert me like when prices will go up or go down. Google also offers that like a a chart that gives you like an estimate about like the price range or whether the likelihood of it going up or down. Um, My mom though, it's been like really missed as of lately. I used them once in the past, but Mamundo is one of those sites that will actually like so it'll display your flight options, mm-hmm. like what, wherever you're trying to go, and you buy it, and it may be a cheaper price than what's on other sites, and that's because they actually negotiate for you. So like they'll offer you the flight at this price, and like these kind of sites get mixed reviews because people don't are not understanding how it works. They're like, oh, you know, that's not the price that was shown to me and I ended up getting charged this and they called me and said this, that, and the third is because they're, they, you know, came across like a mistake fare or somebody gave up a seat or something and they'll offer you this price and you buy it, but they're actually on the back end negotiating it for you and they'll call you back and be like, hey, well, the price price is actually this, is this okay, or this, that, and the third, because I used them once in the past and... The first time I tried to buy a flight, it didn't go through. It actually, um, I got like an email. I, it said like, it's pending. And I was like, well, what does that mean? So I was at work, so I just left it alone. But then I got like another email where I, like, I checked it again and it was like, it failed. And I was like, well, what does that mean? So I'm thinking like, there's something wrong with my card. But I did some more research and I was like, oh, you guys don't actually have these tickets yet yeah. negotiating so I just went through it again because I thought it was a scam I was ready to knock all that shit over but then I looked at it and I looked at the views and I was like I get it now so I went back in and bought um, where I was trying to go the, my flight again and they called me and confirmed all the information and I actually double checked like um, the flight information to make sure they, they were real flights and everything was good I think I saved a hundred and some dollars because mm-hmm. this was when I was going to New Orleans. I went to New Orleans twice in one year because good old Capital One gave me flight miles after spending a certain amount, so I could afford to just put it, just go to New Orleans twice within a couple months. And um, only thing I needed to buy was my flights, and that was how I kind of like saved more money that way. But yeah, I forgot the original question. Something related to flights. I mean, that's good. Um, I know I do like Hopper app, like you said too. 
Um, and was a sky scanner, just fly, oh, all yeah. those ones. Yeah, just fly was a stressful as experience. I think I subscribed to them. I think yeah. I subscribed to them and sky scanner because they, first of all, the emails are very like busy. Oh my god! Um, yeah. I don't know, like I, a I lot of fine print too. And fine I print, and I don't do commotion. Like I get overstimulated kind of easily, and whenever they would send me emails and stuff, it just be big numbers, and they yelling at me, and be like random <laughs> Book now. places, one so, to two days. Yeah, like, stuff I'm not trying to do. So I think the only thing I'm subscribed to now is is Scott Secret Flights. Um, they're pretty cool. I was mad because the week after we we figured out the Columbia situation, they literally sent me an email. Like, mm. They did a tweet the other day that was like, um, they found a way to get like the cheapest flights mm-hmm. um, from whatever location. So you can just send them an airport in that tweet thread and then they'll send you like any destination. So if you're like, mm, I think I want to go to Dallas, but I'm not really sure. Or if I want to go to Dallas, but I also want to go to Honolulu. Like, is there a connecting flight that will take me to both places for cheap? And they'll give you all that information. I was like, okay, I see yeah. I'm trying to get those subscriber numbers. <laughs> yes, um, this is good. There's another But that's probably my follow. favorite one. Yeah, I can't think of another page I follow, but I don't think they tweet that much anyway. Also, tend not to like read my timeline a lot, just get on and say things and leave. <laughs> but I see them from time to time tweeting stuff, and the name escapes me. But yeah, definitely that's that's um, those are sources that you want to get into to like see just what options are available to you. And, and like you know price different things mm-hmm. there's there's other options outside of Google yeah because I think sometimes Google gets on my nerves with that whole like once you look up a flight they gonna keep sending you alerts it's like alright I was just looking down but I think Hopper in terms of like all the apps and different ways that I, I like try to look up ideas Hopper is the best one because you can put in any random date you're like mm, I think I want to go to Asia in the next six months um, or like the next two months and here's the weekends that I'm looking at and it literally shows you like green, yellow, or red, mm-hmm. and that I, some people, like, hate that, and they're like, oh, it's too stressful, because the weekends I want to go, they never have anything, but it's good to look, because sometimes, um, you could be like, oh, okay, I want to go to Costa Rica, but I don't know if I want to go to San Jose, San Jose, or, I forgot the other place, Liberia, I don't freaking know, <laughs> I don't even speak English, I told you, so I don't even know these places' names, but whatever, it's two airports, damn it, um, and it's like, you don't know which one you want to go to, but maybe San Jose is like $300 more for whatever reason. We were looking at flights to go, and I was like, why is it so expensive? It was Easter weekend. I'm like, good damn casualties turning the house <laughs> uh, That's why everything was so expensive. So I would recommend, like, all the ones that we pretty much said. Um, and then also, like, sometimes I just randomly search on Twitter, like, a, a location that I want to go to. Like, um, when we were going to Barcelona, I literally just typed in, like, Barcelona destinations or something random. And it was, like, all the, the different places that this one girl went. And she, like, had a whole blog. Oh, and yeah. And I was yeah. like, Dang. Okay. I mean, it sounds like you got this shit together. <laughs> okay. Um, so, one of the questions from uh, one of my listeners was, do you have advice for people who want to travel but don't have much money in terms of, like, cheap places to go? I guess they probably mean domestic and international. But what's some, you know, some um, cheaper I think I've broken some domestic travel. So New Orleans is definitely Yeah, um, Nola was cheap. My New flight Orleans was fifty dollars on Spirit. Girl, yes. I got on that damn plane almost flew it myself. Ooh, Spirit. Oh. oh. The ghetto, honey, but it was great. The flight was quick. The flight attendant made jokes. I uh, sat next to this lady who was telling me about her son. He was fine. I was trying I to find know. her after the flight. Like, what's wrong with Spirit? You get it? Not wrong with Spirit. <laughs> no, it really is ghetto. It's honestly one of those things where it's like if you go on Spirit, you have to really like be desperate for the damn flight. Yeah, it's so so it's, it's marketed. A lot of people say it's a budget airline. It's good for short distances, but I can't. It's I like can't a even say. <laughs> big gray helmet. Yeah, I can't even say that I would recommend it for that because they're unreliable. Like if they were reliable, sure, I would have took one this weekend to go see my cousin. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, I can't do it. Like <laughs> even. By the time you pay for your bags or, like, the, the fees that, that you got to pay for stuff that's given to you in other airlines, I've heard horror stories about them losing people's bags mm-hmm. and um, flights being canceled at the last minute. I think one of their pilots was doing coke. I mean, it's just... Yeah, it's I mean, not, I'm pretty sure that the pilot, pilots are stressful anyway, so I'm pretty sure everybody's doing some type of coke anyway. <laughs> but 
20 hours. You know, you don't let it get out. So it's whoever the mm -hmm. spirit is just out of the question. But definitely, like, domestic travel-wise, New Orleans is great. Um, of course, New York. I mean, I'm still surprised when I hear people say they haven't been to New York because it's yeah, right here. What? You can get on a bus and come here. Um, and I feel like Philly's a good to place, too. Philly's good. I went to Philly for, it was like a day trip. Me and my friends went to um, the Nick and Drake concert, and we saw the, what's that? So that's the song, the, the, what movie was The that? Rocky joint. I don't know yeah, the Rocky Steps. I don't know what they call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocky. I call it the Rocky Steps. Yeah. So that's a, yeah, that's a nice little day excursion. Yeah. Okay. We went early, we saw the steps, and we got drunk somewhere, and um, we saw the love sign. It was you know, a cute little day trip. Um, Philly's good. Uh, Texas. Te I haven't been to Texas. I haven't been either, but that shit is cheap as hell right now. I'm looking at Houston for this year, so mm, I'm going to go. A little fat trip somewhere. Cause I wanna we were looking at Airbnbs, like big-ass houses, like five-bedroom Yeah, houses. the real estate is cheap is crazy. Like $300 the yeah. whole trip. Um, Miami. Miami's a good time. Like, you, you can have any type of, that's one of those places where, like, people sleep on because everybody goes, but you can literally curate your trip for what you want to do. It's exactly. not just all South Beach. Yes. Yeah. Stay in Fort Lauderdale. Fly mm -hmm. to Fort Lauderdale, stay in there, and then just take Ubers to, mm -hmm. to South Beach whenever you want to go to the beach. Mm -hmm. right, anyway, y'all, we wrapping, but thank you, Shannon. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.